Today, we are completing the topical past papers starting from page number 15 to 19. Topic 2, Introduction to Bookkeeping. So we are completing business documents, focusing on explaining the purpose of business documents, preparing the following business documents such as purchase order, purchase invoice, sales invoice, credit note, statement of account, remittance advice, petty cash voucher, and cash receipt. This is your textbook and we are focusing on page number 28 onwards, Unit 2 Business Documentations. So we are starting with purchase order. A purchase order is normally raised by the customer's purchasing office and then sent to the supplier. And this is how the format of a purchase order looks like. Moving to the next is a credit note. Before that, let's move to invoice. An invoice is a document prepared by the seller when he or she sells goods or provides service on credit. These are the features or these, this is what a purchase or sales invoice contains. This is the format of an invoice. There are two types of invoices, purchases invoice and sales invoice. Moving into the next is a credit note. A credit note is when the supplier has decided to give credit, he or she raises a credit note. The credit note is for the value of the goods, uh, value of the returned goods. The note then will be sent to the customer. Moving to the next one, this is the format of a credit note. Moving to the next will be the statement of account. A statement of account is a detailed report of the contents of an account. An example is a statement sent to the customer showing bills to and payments from the customer during a specific period resulting in an ending balance. So a statement of account is basically sent to a customer starting from how much the customer owes at the beginning of a month and then how much of credit sales which has happened, any sales returns, any payments received from customers, any cash discounts provided, all these will reflect in a statement of account. This is an example of a statement of account which they had given. Moving to the next is the remittance advice. A remittance advice is a note sent from a customer to their supplier informing the supplier that they have paid their invoice. And this is the format of a remittance advice. Recept. Occasionally, a member of staff may wish to purchase postage from the petty cashier or perhaps have some photocopying done for their own personal use. In these cases, the petty cashier will issue a receipt to the staff member for the amount received. So this is how the format of a receipt looks like. Moving to next is a petty cash, vo petty cash voucher. For any small expenses which has incurred, the petty cashier is supposed to write a petty cash voucher. And this is how it looks like. Now you had revised all the business documents till page number 33. And one more which is not in your textbook is the debit note. Debit note is a document which is sent during purchases returns which we send it back to the supplier, credit supplier. Right, moving back to the past paper questions, starting from page number 16. Now, let's identify the source documents of the following. So turn to page number 16. I'll give you 15, I'll give you two minutes to think or guess the answers.
Okay, moving on. Purchased stock on credit from H. Kumar. You're purchasing. Therefore, it's purchases invoice. Paid stamps in cash. So these are very small expenses, which can be concluded as petty cash voucher as a business document. Returned stock or inventory to a supplier which had previously been bought on credit. So this is something related to purchases returns. Therefore, it's a debit note. However, the answer in the marking scheme, there is an error. It's not, it states as credit note, but actually it's a debit note. So please be careful. Deposit, deposited takings into the into his business bank account. Here we either use a slip or a counterfoil. Now you should know what a, uh, does a check counterfoil mean. So what you do is when you're not sure of certain term, terminologies, just go type search for information. I'm moving to the image. And here I get the details. Now this part of the checkbook is called a check counterfoil, which we write all the details to whom we had given the check to and the amount. Payments received from customer by credit transfer. Credit transfer is related to bank dealings, which will reflect in the bank statement. Sent a customer a request for payment for work completed in November 2011. So here, send a sales invoice. Now we had identified the source documents for these transactions. Moving to page number 17. Robin Bird is a sole trader, maintains a full set of accounting books. State one source document Robin would use to record transactions in each of the following books of original entry. So here there are four marks. Take a minute to guess the answer. Let's move to the answers. Cash book. Cash book contains cash and bank column. So we can also consider as bank statement and paying slip or paying slip. One of these answers can, can be availed for one mark. Petty cash book, petty cash voucher. Purchases book. We had a similar question in the previous one. Purchases invoice. Return outwards, which can be all also called as purchases returns. So for purchases returns, it's debit note. Again, there is an error in the marking scheme. It states credit note, actually it's a debit note. Right. Just now, we went through a similar format in your textbook. Right. Now you can see here, it states to complete the following document. And it says PR supplier. The answer over here is credit note because the seller is sending it, sending it to you. And uh, mobile phones 24. Unit cost 75, therefore you multiply to get the answer which gives you 1800.
there is only one transaction so the subtotal would remain as 1800 and then you calculate the trade discount 1800 into 20% which is 20 divided by 100 and which gives an answer of 360. 1,800 take away 360 gives 1,440. The reason for the credit note faulty goods. So this is how you complete the format of a credit note. This is the next question in page number 19. May 2019 paper 1 you can see a similar question a credit note but here there are two items so what do you do take two minutes to think how to solve this question Let's complete now. Quantity times unit cost, 4 times 27.50, 110. And then 2 times 212.50, 425. Subtotal, you add 110 and 425, which gives 535 and then you calculate 10 percent trade discount 535 into 10 divided by 100 which gives an answer of 53.50 and you're supposed to deduct your trade discount now from 535 you deduct 53.50 which gives 481.50. Five marks for this question. Right. Now we are moving to the second part of this section. Topic Introduction to Bookkeeping, page number 20 to 40, Books of Original Entry. The curriculum expectation is to explain the purpose of Books of Original Entry. Prepare the following Books of Original Entry, Purchases Daybook, Sales Daybook, Purchases Returns Daybook, Sales Returns Daybook, Three Column Cash Book, Petty Cash Book, and Journal. Moving back to your textbook. Page number 36. You can see the same ex curriculum expectations are here. Here you get all the definitions of the day books. These are called books of original entry. And here they had given the classification of ledgers, receivables ledger, payables ledger, nominal ledger. Receivables ledger is also called as sales ledger or trade receivables ledger, which has all the customer, credit customers accounts. Payable ledger or purchases ledger or trade payables ledger contains all the credit suppliers personal accounts. Nominal ledger or general ledger includes rest of all the other accounts except trade receivables and trade payables. So here, all business transactions, they are classified into different categories, credit sales, credit purchases, sales returns, purchases returns, cash receipts and payments and other types and where exactly they'll be transferred to. For example, credit sales entered in sales day book, Credit purchases in purchases day book, 
sales returns in sales returns daybook, purchases returns in purchases returns daybook, cash receipts and payments goes to cash book, and if there are small payments, it goes to petty cash book. Rest of all the transactions go to general journal. Moving to page 38, that given the classification of accounts, which I already explained to you. Purchases invoice we already went through in the previous uh, topic. And this is how the format of a purchases daybook looks like. If there are trade discounts, it's a bit different. Now, before moving into this, it's very important to understand the double entry of credit sales, sales returns, credit purchases and purchases returns. Credit sales, debit TR, credit sales. Sales returns, sales returns debit, TR credit. Credit purchases, purchases debit, TP credit. Purchases returns, TP debit, purchases returns credit. Furthermore, you should know how does a trade receivable account looks like because it's part of the past paper question that we are going to complete today. We enter the brought down balance on the debit side because trade receivable is an asset or a debtor. So they have debit balance. Any credit sales made, TR debit sales credit. Therefore, the credit sales appears on the debit side of TR account. Whereas on the credit side, you find sales returns, payments received by cash or bank, discount allowed, and then you balance it, 50, 50 take away, 5, 8, and 2 gives you 35, which you write it as balance carry down, balance brought down 35. Moving back to the past paper question. As you can see here, I had crossed the sentence, all sales are subject to VAT at the rate of 20%. VAT is excluded from your new curriculum. So you're not applying anything related to VAT. Therefore, the marking scheme will be different from what I'm going to explain now. Charlotte is a sole trader, sells goods only on credit, offering all customers trade discount of 10%. Now, before moving to this question, what are they expecting you to prepare? They're expecting you to prepare a sales book, or we call it as a sales day book, and a sales returns day book, followed by some double entries, and then you're supposed to prepare a customer account. Now, let's move to the question and find out where exactly we are going to post these entries to. Now the first one, sold goods to L. Homa. This goes to sales day book. And look at the transaction on 8th. This goes to sales returns day book. Take few minutes to guess the answer of the rest of the transactions. And you can find this question in page number 21 in your topical past paper booklet. Hope you had identified. Now let's check the answers. Sales day book. And this one you can see again sold goods, therefore sales day book. Mm, return goods, therefore sales returns day book. 
again it's sales day book and the last one again sales day book fine so let me put all the sales day book into different colors There's a technical error. Anyways, I'll leave it as it is. Fine. Now let's post all these entries to sales day book and to sales returns day book. Fine. Now there are one, two, three, four, five entries. I'll leave that in black, which goes to sales day book. So move to your sales day book. The first entry occurred on 2nd of November 2016. So two. And here you have to manage your space. So it's 2, 11, 16. And to whom did you make the sale? To L. Holmer, worth of 280. And then there's 10% trade discount as per the question. Calculate trade discount 280, multiply by 10, divide by 100. Therefore, you're supposed to deduct 28. 280 take away 28. Get the answer 252. So take few minutes to complete all the entries which will appear in the sales day book. So I'm doing it silently without explaining. You may finish and check your answers.
Now I'm entering transaction which occurred on 27th. Try to do it in your own and cross check the answers. So I'm entering C lines sale which occurred worth 290. Now I'm calculating the trade discount. Two ninety into ten over hundred, which gives me twenty nine. Two ninety take away twenty nine gives two sixty one. Next transaction occurred on 30th, 11, 16, again to L. Alma. And the amount is 350. And now I'm calculating the trade discount. Three hundred and fifty times ten percent ten over hundred, which gives me thirty five. Three hundred and fifty take away thirty five, three hundred and fifteen. Fine. Now we are done with calculating all the trade discounts and we had found the net value. Uh, please remove the VAT. VAT is not included in your curriculum. But just leave only the pounds mark. Therefore, okay, now you get a total of 2,079. Now we need to transfer this total. Sorry about the delay. Where are we going to transfer this? Transferred to sales account in the sales ledger. Sorry, in the general ledger. This total 2079. Now we are done with the sales day book, moving into the sales returns day book as you can see the green ones which occurred on 8th and on 21st moves to sales returns day book so both are list price so we are supposed to calculate the trade discount let's enter the date which occurred on 8 11 uh, 16 and who returned l holmer returned and what is the worth? The list price is 70.
and there is a trade discount of 10 percent 70 into 10 over 100 which gives 7 and the difference between 7 and 70 gives an answer of 63 and again on 21st 1116 another sales returns by M Ward and the value of the goods list price states 60 now let's calculate the trade discount 60 times 10 over 100 6 60 take away 6 gives an answer of 54 now we are going to transfer the total transferred the total of sales returns account to general ledger and 53 sorry 63 plus 54 gives a total of 170 now we had completed the sales returns daybook moving to the next complete the table below to indicate which side of the account the totals of each daybook will be posted to again moving back to the double entry we prepared a sales daybook and a sales returns daybook and you can see you're supposed to remember these two so for credit sales from sales daybook tr debit sales credit sales returns tr credit sales returns debit therefore the first one sales daybook so what do we do for the sales as per the double entry we credit sales and sales ledger control account or total trade receivable we debit sales returns sales returns we debit it and TR or sales ledger control account we credit I'd remove this portion because it included the VAT, so we are not considering that. So you get four marks for this. Moving to the next part. Now, this is very important to focus. Remember, you're going to gather all the information related to L. Homer. Let's move to Homer. And uh, you can see this. What else we have related to him over here? And then again, the last one two credit sales and one sales return. Moving back to the format. As per the question, we have two credit sales one sales returns as per this format moving back to the question let's complete l homer's account you have an opening balance on 1st of november 16 balance brought down which is worth 400 this amount and then on 7th 
he is paying back this amount with 5% cash discount. So go to the credit side, enter the date, and he is paying by check. Therefore, you include it as bank. So we should find out how much you are paying. And on the same date, 5% cash discount. So he's supposed to pay. So let's enter discount allowed. And we can do a small calculation there. Four hundred into five divided by hundred. Therefore, the discount allowed amount would be twenty. Now let's find the bank amount. Four hundred take away twenty. Three hundred and eighty. Now in the question, you had the other transactions. So let's enter the rest. So you can see as per the question on second. 11, 16, there was a credit sale. So credit sales. And what is the amount of credit sales? 252. And then again on 30th, there was another credit sale. Amounted to 315. I are supposed to enter these two on the debit side as per the format. And then moving to the next part, there was one sales return. When did it occur? The sales return occurred on 8th. Sales returns. Let's move back to our day books and check. So this 252 and these 315 should move to that ledger which we entered right now. This one and this one we are done. Now moving back to the sales returns day book goes to take this one which is worth 63. Moving back to the, to the ledger. We'll enter 63. And we are supposed to post this on the credit side. Now we are done posting all the entries. Now it's time to balance. Let's balance the account. Right. Now let's see which side is greater. As you can see, the debit side is greater, which is 9.37. And then you enter it on the credit side, 9.37. Take away 380, take away 20, take away 63, which gives a balance of 474. And the date would be 30th 11, 16 as balance carried down. And then on the opposite side, if today is 30th 11, tomorrow would be 1st 
of 12, 16 as balance brought down. 474. Moving to the next, again, you're supposed to find the source documents. Petty cash book will give the answer of petty cash voucher. Purchases day book. This is the third question we are doing similar to this purchases invoice. Purchases returns day book would be a debit note. Now we had completed till page number 23. And I'm giving you a homework to complete from page number 24 to 29. I'll be sending the answers once you all are done and uploaded the work in Google Classroom. Thank you.